Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Hello. Hello. Everybody okay? So, Mr. P, we have another uh, grade white gym kit. Um, yes, we do. We have a math one, but we're also going to do a um, a Kahoot after this for the ones who want to. Yeah. And then we'll have gym kit at two. So, are we doing another literacy one? Uh, the gym kit at two will be math today, and then like tomorrow. Literacy tomorrow, and then Friday will be science or social studies. Um, will that be a parents versus students? That will be sixth grade. We'll do another parent versus student on another day, though. Yep. Oh, okay, thanks. And uh, I was going to say something else. Oh, and the gym kit at 2 o'clock will be zombies versus humans. It's back today. Whoa. They brought it back this morning or last night or whenever. They announced it was coming back today. Did you all see um, on, I sent a link out on an earpod collaborate to do not, you don't have to do it right now, but do it sometime today or tomorrow. I'll wait till everybody's in and I'll go, I'll, I'll remind everybody. Let me get everybody in. So my face is weird because I'm in the family room and I'm sitting on a table and it's going up toward the light. So it may have an aura around my face. Because it's pointing up at the fan. So all the other teachers are getting, um, well, not all the other teachers, but some teachers are getting all like overwhelmed because they've got to start pushing out assignments. Um, whereas we've been doing it the whole time. So we're all good because we've been on it from the get go. So that's good. All right, if you've not joined the Pear Deck, it's joinpd.com and the number is QPHCL, Quick Pairs, pears help confuse lemons. That's very true. Think of pears as like say Graham and lemons is say Jayla because she's usually confused, right? Right, Jayla? <laughs> Get it, that's a joke. It's weird when nobody's mics are on. It's like crickets. It's like watching the shows on TV where there's no audience and they make jokes and it's just quiet. It's odd, isn't it? Or how about like a silent film or something? Yeah. Like I was watching Jimmy Fallon, the Tonight Show last night, and he was doing his uh, monologue stuff. And I was like, you're trying so hard and nobody's, you don't know if anybody's laughing or not. Yeah. Been but yeah. Oh my goodness, this presentation thing. Yeah, joinpd.com, QPHCL. And remember, each day after it's over, your answers get sent to you on Google Classroom. Oh, that's what that is? Yeah. Is that what it is? Oh. Yeah. I never paid attention that in, to that. You click that and get your slide results of what you answered. Like if we were at real school, that would be a participation grade for answering the slides. 
All right, I'm in. But we're doing it for the love of learning so that you're prepared, right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's a math meeting tomorrow with all the math teachers to see what gaps we need to make sure that we're working on to make sure kids are ready for the next grade. Um, and some of you, you know, might want to try for the integrated math one and you definitely want to make sure that you're making sure to make those gaps get closed because you're skipping grade levels when you do that. If they even have it, they may not even have it because of all this. I don't know. But either way, you'll be going to seventh grade math and a lot of sixth grade math has just been building on stuff you started in fifth grade, whereas in seventh grade, they take the ratio stuff and go way further with it. Um, so it's definitely some more rigor. Well, I think that like, because of this, like, um, like everything, all of the grades, they would probably be like, you would think that like they would all be set back for like a grade. Yeah. And like, we don't want that because nope. then everyone would have to go in like, well, I'm telling you, twice as hard. And I'm telling you, if you all are just going through and watching the ed puzzles and learning and taking notes on the things I'm sending you, I'm giving you everything that would have been covered so you won't have any gaps when you start seventh grade. If you're taking it seriously and doing it, you'll be good. Because I'm doing exactly the stuff we'd be doing if we were really in school. All right, I'm gonna start the um, Pear Deck in just a second. Uh, most of you aren't connected yet. So if you've not joined Pear Deck, if you'll please go ahead and do that. Because there's, there's some things I want you to be able to draw on a, uh, on a slide today um, to clear up a couple of confusion things about nets, that common confusions that kids have. All right, if you've not joined the Pear Deck, if you can go ahead and do that in the next 30 seconds or so, so I can go ahead and start. And I'll just say again what I said earlier for everybody else being in there. Um, that is that um, there's a Nearpod link on Google Classroom that's called Collaborate. And it says on there to find an example of something in your real world that would have a surface area and volume that you could then post on there with its, its measurements. And then we're gonna all talk about those actual real objects. Like, oh, oh here's, this, with it? here's this can of coffee. Um, how, what would its surface area be? How much volume would it have? Here's this um, box that we got from Amazon. What would be its dimensions to get its surface area and its volume? So that's what you're posting on that Nearpod mm -hmm. Collaborate. Um, if it won't let you put a photo on there, you can just describe what it is and give us the dimensions in words. Um, I don't know if it'll let you put a photo or not, but if it lets you put it a photo, will. Even better. I prefer it. Does. All right, so I'm going to start um, with the Pear Deck. So QPHCL. And today we're talking about surface areas some more. And first up is a what looks like a Rubik's cube. It is not a Rubik's cube for the simple fact that it doesn't have three sides by three sides by three, right? So it's three by two by three, which is beside the point. What I would like for you to do is on your screen, will you draw me what would the net of that cube look like? Now, let me say it again. It is not a cube. It is not a cube. I shouldn't have said that. It's a rectangular prism. A cube is a rectangular prism that actually has a square for the base. This has a rectangle for the base, right? So if you'll draw on your near pot on your pear deck, what would the net for that rectangular prism look like just over in the space beside it? So it would have six faces, right? It have a top, a bottom, a front, a back, and two sides. So think of a cereal box. Think the cereal, cereal box has the big front and the big back. It has the two skinny sides and it has the top and bottom.
Okay, got people hard at work drawing some faces. Now, you don't have to be elaborate. You can just give me the main, the, you don't have to draw all the little grids in. You can just give me the, the main sides. So think of that as like a box that you're breaking down. Like the literal boxes that we had at Graymar with your stuff in it and you flattened them out. That'd be like you also taking a knife and cutting one of the edges open and laying it out. So what would that net look like? And by the way, a net's defined as the 2D representation of a 3D solid, AKA a box. Okay, I'm gonna step over here and let the dog out because she's whining. He muted all the time. She's whining because she doesn't want to be in here involved in this math. All right, so yeah, um, the faces that you drew would um, be similar to some of the things I'm gonna show you next. Okay, so I'm going to the next slide. All right. Now, here's the slide again. Um, before we go to the, the next slide, will you on your drawing color code the three sets of faces? Now, let me explain what I mean. Okay, so I, say I've got a cereal box in my hand. Um, the front of the box, it says Fruity Pebbles, and in the back of the box, it gives you the prize that you can get. Okay, that's a matching set of faces because they have the same area. They're the same length times width, right? Then the top and the bottom of the box match, but then yet the two side panels that have the nutrition and junk on that nobody ever looks at, they also match. But the two sides don't match the front and back and they don't match the top and bottom. So will you color code on this box, this uh, rectangular prism that looks like a cube, but not, where are the three sets of faces? If you can color code like say, the two that match, these two match because they're red, these two match because I'm making them green, these two match because I'm saying they're blue. Now, granted, you can't see some of the faces so you can point to where they are with an arrow. We have all but like three kids here today, so that's awesome. Okay, Michaela, that's a good job. I like that. Just happened to see yours. Okay, Jayla, that's clever how you're doing that. Hey, Jayla, are you able to share your screen to show that? Or Michaela? Um, so let me... Sure, I can. Yeah, if you can do that. I don't know if you can or not. Well, I can't right now because I'm doing these on my... Um, okay, that's okay. My that's fine. It's fine. Um, it's fine. I can. Okay. Okay, if you'll look at Jayla on her, um, where her face would be, you can literally see um, that she colored the purple and then she's got a purple back behind there to represent the back of the box that you can't see. She's got a green to represent the two side panels. And then she's got a blue to represent top and bottom. And most everybody else has the same thing. Kimani also has a big shark floating along in his, um, which is interesting. And um, so most of you've color coded that way. Pramita, you did that with drawing arrows around. Uh, Josiah, that's pretty clever. Hey, Josiah, are you able to put yours up? Um, I think so. How do I do it? Okay. So is it on a separate device or is it just on the same device you're zooming on? Same device. Okay. Then that's fine. So I'm going to show you on my phone right here. So he color coded and then he took the, well, where'd it go? He drew color lines. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Well, my green screen's getting in the way. Well, crap. Okay, sorry. So um, he drew a red front and a red arrow going to the back. He drew a purple side panel and a purple arrow going around to the other side. And he drew an orange top with an arrow going underneath to the bottom. So yeah, the point is now if it were a cube, would there be two set? Would there be three sets of matching faces? 
What do y'all say, yes or no? Hey, Eli, if you'll keep muted because that's feed, that gives the feedback unless you're gonna, unless you're talking, okay? They all would be equal faces, correct? They would. So with a rectangular prism, there's the front and the back that match, the two sides that match, and the top and bottom of the max match. But if it's a square prism, that means it's also then called a cube. Is it still a rectangular prism? Yes, just like a square is still a rectangle, it's still a rectangle prism. Now, the next slide I'm gonna ask you to tell me, is this net a, 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 a cube in the making? All right, so here it is. Uh, you're gonna type yes or no, I mean, excuse me, you're gonna draw on this slide yes or no, or, okay, let me rephrase that. So over here where it says yes or no, circle yes or circle no, and then will you show me if it's yes, where are the three sets of matching faces? Color code them on that um, net. So on that net, circle yes or no, would that make a cube? And then tell me where's the top bottom, the front back and the two sides? Like just put those, like color code those. Just like this is got some yeses and some noes. Hey, Josie, are you able to show, are you on a separate device for your ed, uh, Pear Deck part? Yes. Could you show yours in a second? Madeline, are you able to show yours on, on a separate device? No. It's okay if you can't. I'm on the same device. Josie, you can though. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, or Graham, somebody who's got a separate thing you're doing the Pear Deck on from where the Zoom is, they could put it up where your face is so we could see it. That would be great. Let me, I got to bring somebody in over here. Okay. Miss Anna, you're always welcome to play on the Pear Deck if you ever want to. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Y'all, there's Miss Anna. Say hi to Miss Anna. Hello. Uh, well, they're muted. They're muted. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, a lot of you are saying this. I'm gonna. I'm most of you are saying yes is the answer. So let me say if I can. I'm gonna try to summarize what most of you've said. Most of you've said that. Um, this and this say are the sides, okay? And then that this and this could be the front and the back and that this and this could be the top and the bottom. So if you can visualize, this is the bottom, and then you literally bring those two up to the front and back, bring the other two up to the sides, and then that last one, this one right here, would go up on the top. Now, here's a question. Some of you pointed out these little things right here. What are these? Could somebody unmute and tell me what you think these things are? I think I know what they are. Graham, go ahead. So they're supposed to be like a foldable paper design. So that way, like if you folded it up, it would hold itself together instead of falling apart. Exactly like right. Was, yeah. So that would be literally what would happen if you literally taped it together. <laughs> it would actually, if you cut that on a paper, that would literally make a cube that you could tape together and it would stay together. That, that's exactly right. All right, so I've got another one for you. All right, will this make a cube? Will this come together and make the cube? So tell me yes or no. Will that one work? All you have to do is a circle yes or no. 
Just circle a yes or a no. All right, everybody I see, I don't think I caught anybody. Everybody said yes, it would make a, would make, so yes, you're right, that would also make one. So this would be the bottom, and this would be the top. This would be a side, and a side, and this would be a front and a back. This has to be different amount a different size there so yes it would make um a cube okay so that's a yes all right what about this one yes or no just circle yes or no and do i have a volunteer who would um use their annotation tool to show us if it's a yes or if it's a no when we decide as a group if you are willing, just turn your mute off and say your name. Okay, so let me um, just pick somebody. Sure. All right, Michaela, would you do it? I guess so. Mm. Okay, yes. thank you. Did you say yes or no? I said yes. Uh, most all of your classmates also said yes. A few said no. Um, so, Michaela, if you say yes, can you show me how that would come together? Do you know how to use uh, the annotation tool? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, I think it would be. I think this one right here, I think that would be the a side. That could be a, did you side. say a, a side? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And then. <laughs> okay, let me, let me, can I start you in a certain place? Sure. Okay, let's pretend like this is the bottom wait click the right button yeah that's the button that's the bottom if that's the bottom michaela where's the matching top what would come up and be the top uh, i think this one would you're right okay that's correct that would be the top all right so then michaela if this is the top and bottom where would be the front and or the back Mm. Would it be this one up here at the top and this one? Okay, those go together. That's right. So those two go together. So let's let me mark them a different way. I'm gonna fill them in with this. That one and that one go together, don't they? Yes. Yep. And then this could be my front. And this could be my back. Yeah. Yes, that one would make as well. All right, one more. Okay, what about this? I've got on here that the, there are 11 nets that would make a cube. Look through there, and if you will, tell me if you agree or disagree that all 11 of those look like they could make a net for a cube. Where there'd be a bottom and a top, a side and a side, and a front and a back. So just tell me yes. If you think all of them, if you think most of them, but not this one. Just tell me that.
All right. Some of you are saying all of them look like they work. A few of you say you don't think they all work. Um, so let me call on some people. Mason, I'm going to point to one and tell me if you think it would or not. Okay. What about this one right here? Yes or no? What do you think? Uh, I say yes. Okay. You're correct. It does. All right. Um, Chloe, what about this one that looks like a T? Could I fold that up and it would still make a cube? Um, yeah. Yes, it would. Correct. That's right as well. So that could be the bottom. That would be the top right there. And then you'd see side, side, front, back. Yep. Okay. Um, Fallon, what do you say about this third one? Could I make a cube out of that? Uh, yeah. Yep, I could. Uh, what about the next one, Ashley? What do you say about this one? Could that make a cube? You there? Uh, Courtney, what do you say? Can't get Ashley. Would this make a cube? Okay, I'm seeing people nod their head. So the actual out the actual truth is all of these will make the cube. So a cube's odd in the fact that there are lots of nets that can be folded back together and make the cube. Are there ways you could arrange those six sides as a net that wouldn't make a cube? Yes. But there are 11 different nets that would make that same cube. All right, so moving on. So here is a rectangular prism. And what I would like for you to do is for you to give me its complete surface area. Now I've made it easy for you in that I have um, given you the three sets of the faces, okay? So the top bottom would be the 10 by three, all right? So that would be here, up here, and down here, that's 10 by three. Uh, the front and back would be here. Let me pick another thing. This is the front. Around there is the back. And it's 10 by 4. And then the two sides would be here and here. All right. So if you go ahead and come up with and send on Pear Deck, what is the total surface area of that cube? And you would put it in, of course, square inches because it says it's inches. Izzy, will you help us through this one? So the two faces that are the top and bottom would be how many square inches? Why did I say 30 times two? Because one face is 30 inches, one top, one bottom is 30, so that's 60 in total, right? Agree? Uh, could somebody help me with why um, this should be 40 times two? Betty, could you help me with that? Betty, you're muted. Hey, let me unmute you. Hang on. I did. Okay, thank you. Okay. So it would be 40 because on the front of that and the front and back, there are two slides sides that are worth uh, 40 each. Four times 10 is 40, right? And there's a back one. So that's 80 total for the front and the back. And then if I'm doing the uh, sides right here, um, I'm going to say what right there? Uh, so you're going to want to say 
equals 12 and then two in parentheses because there are two faces that have 12 on it. That's correct. Which equals okay. 24. So that's going to be 24. Now, Dr. Parsons, if she was here over here, she's out there doing a Zoom. If she were in here right now, she'd be like, you can't put that on the same line because that's mathematically not right. And you're right, it's not. So it would be 24. I should have a separate line for that. So it'd be 60 plus 80, which is 140 plus 24, which is what all of you said. It's 164 square inches for the whole surface area of that, right? And if you said that, you are correct, okay? Next slide. If you'll also do this one, please. Now, this one is no different except that you got to do fractions. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-select people if you don't care to help me. Um, let's see here. Um, Kylie, will you do the top and bottom for us? And um, Kimani, will you do the front and back? And Pickle, will you do the sides? In just a minute, once everybody puts in their answers. Like I said, remember, after you get off of here, if you don't care to remember to go over to Google Classroom, click on that Nearpod and put a picture of, a, of some kind of object at your house that would have a volume and a surface area that we could actually come up with the answer to. If you have something to measure it to get the real number, that would be super great. If you can't get a picture on there, just type out the description of what it is and what its measurements are. And I mean, you have until tomorrow to do that, but just I'd say do it now so you won't forget. That would be great. All right, Kylie, are you ready? No, I'll give you a second. You all aren't ready. I forgot you got fractions. This one takes a little longer. You all do know on your iPad, the calculator, if you turn it um, landscape, you have a different calculator, right? Yes. Um, or Mr. Phone, P. Or your phone. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't, I can't get onto Pear Deck. Like it doesn't always work for me, but okay. I can tell you the answer. Like, for yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah. I just okay. want you to tell me when I get to okay. you. And if your pair deck, if your pair deck doesn't work, you can always just text me your answers. That's always fine. All right, Kylie, will you go ahead and lead us off with the um, top and bottom? Sure. Okay. Thank you. So, um, two and one fourth times three is six and three fourths. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do decimals because of the fractions are hard to do on here. Okay. And then because there's two sides, you multiply that times two. Which equals? 13 and a half. Now remember, mathematically, I can't have all that on the same line, but pretend like it's not. And don't tell Dr. Parsons. Okay, uh, who was doing my front and back? Kiwi was. Okay, Kiwi. What'd you say? Well, you give us the, the front and back measurements. 13.5. Uh, 13.5? Yes. Okay. Times two of those. Right? Yes. And that would be 27? 27? Yeah. Okay. And Lincoln, what about the third one here? 10 and 1 eighth. Okay, how did you get that? Uh, four and 1 half times two and 1 fourth. Yep, and that's 10 and 1 eighth as a decimal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then two of those? Um, 20 and 1 fourth, or 20.25. Yeah, perfect. All right, so then I would add 13.5, 27, and 20.25, and all that together was, let me see what you all said, a grand total of, um, honestly, don't do one. Let's see. I've got a 50, all right, so can somebody add those up? So we've got... I 
Thank you. 13.5, 27. So that would be 50. I mean, 40.5, 60. 60.525. 20.25. Yeah, uh, actually, it's 60.75. Okay, 60.75. Yep, you're exactly right. 60.75. Okay, so the total answer is 60.75 square meters on that. All right. One Wait, last Mrs. one. P, do we need to yeah. multiply it by two since there are two faces? Yeah, that's what we were doing over here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So Thanks. here was one face times two of them. Here's one face times two of them. Here's a face right. times two of them. Thanks, I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. So last one. And it is here. So if you can send me this one, please. So you're gonna multiply two and a half times four for the sides. You're gonna do um, seven and a half times four, I mean, two and a half for the front and the back. And then you're gonna do seven and a half times two and a half for the front and back. And if you just want to on your text, I mean, on your Pear Deck, just send me what are the three sets of multiplication, you can do that. Do you just want to tell me the front and back or this times this, the two sides or this times this, and the top and bottom is this times this, that's fine too. So I'm gonna go over here and type the sections um, and I'm gonna use decimal because I don't have a fraction little thing. Okay, so for the front and back, I would have um, 7.5 times 2.5. And I need two sets of that, okay? For the side, um, I would need four times 2.5. And then for the top and bottom, I would need uh, seven and a half times four. Is that right? And then I would multiply those all together and I'd have two sets of that added all together and that would be my total surface area for that. All right, our time is over in less than a minute. So does anybody have a question about uh, surface area of prisms? We're moving on to uh, pyramids tomorrow. So that's all on prisms. If you do, please, please, please send me a text. You set up a FaceTime. I'm happy to tutor you on individually if you need help. Uh, join us back for the Kahoot after this. I'll reset it and zoom you back. And then don't forget the uh, GIM kit for sixth grade at two o'clock today, okay? All right, bye guys. Right. See you guys. Come back in just about three minutes. See ya. <laughs>